Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming. We gather here, to, first of all, first and foremost, to rejoice in the blessings of our Lord. We also gather uh, to thank so many of you who are part of this wonderful park. The playground project started because of all sorts of underlying issues. Originally, we were just looking at replacing the equipment. Next thing we know, here is this beautiful park that we have. The playground is awesome. That was an amazing gift. I love the playground. I wish I was a kid again. <laughs> I probably will play on it more than my wife will. We look at this playground now, but this is something that is going to be used years, generations and generations to come. And it's just amazing that, you know, it came from sacrifice, people's sacrifice. And really and truly it's through the generosity of our parishioners. And we had so many different people involved, but if it hadn't been for Marty Cornejo, Matt Lazo, and Kurt Cornejo, that playground and park would not have happened in the way it did. Thank you all. I hope everybody enjoys it as much as I like looking at it. It's just pretty refreshing to see all these kids playing. It's amazing to hear you talk about these current individuals and families of the parish. I remember growing up here, these homes were built by St. Thomas parishioners, and they were all deeply involved in the building of this church. And here we are, 60 years later, talking about the new playground that is here today because of the hard work of the individuals who started this parish. I'm Gwen Siebert. I've been in St. Thomas Aquinas Parish for quite a long time now. I'm Joanne Maloney, and uh, we've been members of St. Thomas since the beginning. I don't, don't think we, we met before St. Thomas. Saint Thomas yeah. I think it was. And we had the same wedding anniversary. Yes. <laughs> and the same amount of years, too, well. Yes, yes, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> but she had eight children, and I only had six. When this pair started, it was new in Wichita, and all of the families that I, I, I came to know that I went to school with, we were establishing something brand new, which most families had never been a part of before. Back in 1957, the parish was established. We went to Mass at O'Shaughnessy Hall over at Cape and Memorial High School. St. Thomas, you know, is just a natural progression of the growth of the church here in Wichita. When I was a kid, um, Rock Road turned dirt north of 13th Street. So this was far east Wichita, and they had this opportunity to create this brand new parish. They wanted to establish a family environment where everyone was involved, where everyone felt welcome. We have found over and over again that schools bring life to a parish community. And so we built our school first. I remember when the school was first starting, they got books from the library by you would go to a bookstore, buy a book, and then you'd bring it to school and donate it. And then I remember the sisters lived across the street. The gym was where the music room library are together now. That was just the gym, and that's where we ate lunch in there, too. My favorite part of going to school here was the recesses because the playground was so big. It was just huge. Growing up, I mean, my first memory would be probably the church in the basement of the school. It was called the basement church. I liked it, it was cozy. So the stairs that you go down now and enter into the middle school and walk down those same stairs and when those doors opened, you were in this little tiny church. I don't know how the elders managed that because there were no elevators. So they trucked it in and out, in the snow, in the rain, in the summer. <laughs> the only story that I really remember was from uh, Bob McGrath. And Bob said that when he died, he was going to order that bricks and stones be put in his casket to make up for all of the times that he had to carry all of those coffins out of the basement church. It was very intimate, and maybe that's why that formation started of being that close to Christ in the Eucharist, and then growing up uh, in the big church, just feeling that faith grow. Father Phil Allen is the pastor who built this church. 
Oh, it was an enormous process. My parents and um, my husband's parents were both involved in the fundraising. Father Allen was not a builder, and he was almost taken kicking and screaming to build this church by the, the committee that you know, raised the funds and helped design the, the church. And he was not going to build the church until he really felt confident that he could pay for the church. Everyone asks why there aren't stained glass windows in our church. It was built at the end of an energy crisis, and so there was great concern about being able to afford the heating and the air conditioning, and so the, the church was built without windows. The church is a place where we're supposed to receive food for the soul. The biggest moments in our lives occur here, from baptism, confession, confirmation, matrimony, your final celebration or your funeral will happen in this church. There's no more important place. When we first got to the parish, we were a little bit intimidated. Um, it was a big, seemed like a big family, big community. Um, church was always packed. It was definitely a lot. I think seeing so many people engaged already and trying to find our way in was a journey. We're all related, and if we're not actually related to one another, we've known each other so long that we think we are related to each other. If you open your heart and your arms, people are gonna be there ready to help you at any given notice. St. Thomas is a place you never knew you needed. Some early memories of taking the kids, dropping them off, hanging out with them in front of the Mary statue. It's a tradition now. Early memories of the teachers. I mean, for me, it was seeing Miss Sweet again, someone who was at Capen when I was there, and then just kind of had to re-rack that relationship. I had to understand, like, okay, she's here for me and my children. She's not here to tell me to cut my hair. So St. Thomas Aquinas, to me, is a community of believers that not only love God, but are out to help each other. It's like you're a city within this city of people doing everything together. What it does is it infuses your whole life with Catholicism. We continue to stay involved because this is our parish, these are our people. We want it to succeed, we want it to grow. And we learned it from the kindness, the generosity, the stewardship of those who had gone before us. James Smith. Yeah. This is Marianne Lechtag, yeah. uh -huh. Oh my gosh, that, <laughs> it's an old one, isn't it? <laughs> I just can't imagine not having it there. And it's just continued to grow into a wonderful parish. St. Thomas is home for me. That new playground is unbelievable. You won't believe it. Uh -huh. Makes me want to get out and play. I think for our founding members, some of their biggest dreams were to see this tiny parish just grow. We have a school that's thriving and a parish that not only is a part of the community, but is the community. Being a parishioner my whole life, I've seen things evolve, things change, but that foundation has stayed the same. We were not there during the beginning, but we feel a part of that plan, that dream, that vision. We know that St. Thomas is what made us who we were. I think the legacy we can leave for St. Thomas is really the only legacy you actually leave, and that's your children. They're the reason we come to school. It's the reason we come to our jobs each and every single day. It's to make a connection with one of them. It's to um, let them know that they are loved, to help them build their faith, and ultimately, like we love to say, to get them to heaven. If I could send a message to our future generations at St. Thomas Aquinas, I would want their first reaction to be one of gratitude. Gratitude for all that the people of God in the past have given to make St. Thomas such a wonderful place. I think that they should also be proud, proud of what their parents and their grandparents and their families have established in, in Christ Jesus. 
it should challenge them to want to do the same for their children and their future generations as well. We are the students of St. Thomas Aquinas, a parish blessed by families, fueled by faith, and a church born in the basement. We walk in the footsteps of those who came before us to say thank you. We're grateful for the dreams and the vision that provide us with the gifts that we have today. Because of you, our new park is more than just a playground. It's a symbol of the heart of our community and the generosity of our parishioners. In these classrooms, we learn, we explore, and we pray. We share our talents, our voices, and our stories. But if these halls could talk, they tell the stories of students carrying forward what you started. Your kindness built the wall. Your hope paved the walkways. Your compassion filled the pews. Our church is strong because of your sacrifice and your stewardship. You taught us the power of generosity and devotion. You lived your faith for us to see so we could grow stronger in ours. You showed us that excellence is the standard, that faith is our foundation, and that community is our strength. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for our school. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our parish. Thank you for making St. Thomas our home.